In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this psychedelic background all in After Effects with no plugins and in no time at all. Now I found a very cool way to mix all these saturated colors without getting any of them muddy or gray. And to me, this effect looks very much like an animated tie dye or maybe some psychedelic space background that you might see in a 2001 Space Oddity Stargate sequence. And of course, we can change all of these colors really easily as well if the full rainbow spectrum isn't your thing. So let's start off in a new comp. I'm just gonna delete all of these layers here and then let's build it from scratch. Start by creating a new solid with Control or Command Y. The color doesn't matter, but I'm going to name it Noise because we always label our layers. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add the effect Fractal Noise. This generates a nice static noisy pattern here, which is gonna be our source of randomness. So let's up the contrast more to 300. Let's open up its transform property and increase its scale to 200. So it's a fair bit bigger. And at the moment it's static, so we need to animate this and we can do that by Alt or Option clicking the evolution stopwatch, which will open up our expression window down here. And I'm just gonna type in the simple expression, time asterisk 400 which will just keep this noise animating at a constant rate. If you want it faster, increase this number from 400 to you know, 600, 800, or to slow it down, take it to 200, 100. Whatever tickles your fancy, I think 400 works well for this. And then let's close up this layer's property so we have more room. And we're gonna create our colors in a bit of a different way to keep any of those grays and muddiness out of there. And this is a very similar principle to the RGB split video I put out recently. So we're gonna create three layers of this noise, each with a different color channel, or create an imitation of that at least. So we're gonna add the effect tint to this layer and we're gonna change what it maps the white to. So let's select this box and we're gonna map it to 100% red. Make sure your red is 255, the maximum red it can be and zero on the green and blue values. Hit okay. Let's call this noise R and we're gonna duplicate that twice to create three copies and call them noise R, G and B for red, green and blue. And let's change the color of these as well to make our project a little more organized because you know, we deserve it. Let's hide noise R, then on noise green, change the red to 100% green, making sure it's 0, 0255, 0. And we also want to change the noise pattern from the red one. So if we flick that on and off, we can see the noise in the same areas where it's black is the same on both layers. So we can change that on either one by going up to evolution options and just changing the random seed to anything else other than zero for the first layer. And then on blue, change that red to 100% blue and just pick another random seed at random. So now the noise is in all different places. Now to add them together, we just select them all and change the blending mode from normal to add. And then we get a nice rainbow noise and we get the full spectrum because where the red and green meet, we get yellow. So we get cyan, magenta and yellow in there as well. But one other subtle touch I'm gonna add is on the noise green layer. I'm just gonna open up the transform property and I'm gonna animate its scale going from 200. And at the end of our comp, let's change that to 400. So if we solo the green layer, we can see that's just scaling up as well. And for me, that just looks a bit more foreboding and intimidating. And then together, it kind of looks like it's coming towards us at least in one layer. And now let's add some more effects because this is looking quite a bit of a mess at the moment. So let's make a new adjustment layer with Control Alt Y or Command Option Y. Let's call that effects. And we're gonna add the effect turbulent displace, which is going to warp our layer severely, but we're gonna warp it even more. Let's change its amount from 50 up to 200 and drop its size down to 20. We want to animate this as well. So let's alter option, click evolution and type in times asterisk 100. And now if we play it back, we get this really psychedelic looking color pattern, but it's still looking very funky and weird. So then we're gonna add the effect, our old favorite CC radial fast blur. And this will blur everything from the center outwards. And we're gonna change the amount from 50 up to 95. There, now we can see this all becoming sort of streaks of light, kind of like you're going through warp speed. And I really like how these lines make it feel like tie dye, as if this is where the cloth was tied and rolled together. And this is why I think CC Radial Fast Blur is a really fun blur to use. And you might think that this pretty much undoes everything we did with this turbulent displace effect. Because if we hide the turbulent displace and we just add CC Radial Fast Blur, we get a pretty similar look. But for me, adding that turbulent displace adds a lot more variety, especially when it's animated. Here's it without the turbulent displace. And here is it with, it's very subtle, but I think it just adds a bit more dimension and these streaks get a lot more finer and a little bit more detailed. But again, adjust that to your own needs if you're worried about render time and you're not too worried about these extra details. 
Now we're getting close, but there are some more really useful techniques that we can use to elevate this. And if you're finding this video useful so far, please give it a like. That really helps the channel enormously and keeps me able to make these videos every week. And consider subscribing if you want more of them so you don't miss out. Now, this effect is looking good if I don't say so myself, but it doesn't have the brightness that I promised. There are still some areas that are a bit gray and a bit muddy, and I don't like that at all. Those are driving me batty, and I don't like them one bit, so let's get rid of them. And this is a two-part process. The first thing that we can do is just add a hue and saturation effect and increase the saturation. Now, if we go too far, that looks very tacky and very overbearing, but if we put that at the top of our effect stack, above CC read or fast blur and even above turbulent displace. And we turn that on and off, it's much more subtle, but it does help us get closer to where we want to be. Now, if we turn off this effects layer, we can see that our muddiness is going from these black areas. And that's because there's areas of our three fractal noises where there's no color to cover it up. So some of our black background is showing through. So we can simply get rid of that by creating a new solid, control Y, and let's change this color to bright red. This doesn't matter because we're gonna change the color soon. And let's drop that right at the bottom. Now, this has gotten rid of our moneyness. There's no more black areas, but everything is really red. It's either red, magenta, or yellow because blue and green can't show 100% on top of the red background. And if we turn our effects on, this looks very much like a tie-dye effect with a more restricted color palette. So this is very useful for that if that's the effect you're after. But I do wanna show all of the colors. So let's add a fill effect to our background and start changing its color. And I love using the fill effect mainly because I can simply select this box and then change the colors in here and it will update automatically. So we can select blue if we want a very blue focused color screen or green even, or push it through any of these other colors. But we wanna get all of the colors. So we need something that's not too saturated. If we go to white, uh, everything becomes white, so that's no good. If we go to black, that's the same issue we were in before, where we've got all these muddy colors. And in gray, that doesn't really look that great or get us there either. That just looks blown out and overexposed. So I found from my experimenting that it's best to favor a very saturated color around in the middle of the brightness, maybe further darkness if you want. And the color you choose is just going to flavor the other colors that you see here. So we can push it a bit more further to black to get more colors in there. But I think a sort of dark red works well and we get a bit more of a purple tint to the whole scene and of course you can change it to any color you like but i like this dark red and it might seem that we're not getting really any blue or any green but if you play our animation we can see that they do show through just they weren't on that frame that we were pointing at before so even though this is leaning more red we still get a lot of the blues and greens as well and now we've got our cool psychedelic sci-fi background but here comes an extra juicy tip, which is just for everyone staying for the up late section of the tutorial, which starts now. So another thing I wanted to show is to how to get a bit of a dark edge or dark mood to this without it getting too muddy. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate a fractal noise and I'm just gonna call this one black and let's turn our effects off. I'm gonna get rid of that tint effect and then set it from add to multiply. So now we have a layer of black noise over the top of everything. And we're gonna put the contrast way up from 300 to, let's go to a thousand. We want this as much contrast as we can get. Of course, without being silly, that would be that would be ridiculous to go any further than 1000. And let's open up the transform and take the scale back down to around 30. And now we're gonna add another radial fast blur, but this time just to this layer. CC radial fast blur that is, so that to 95. And then we're gonna add a curves effect to just increase that contrast way more. And we're gonna make this curve as steep as possible. So we are only getting black and white and I'm just doing this a bit left of the center here. So we get mostly white and then these black lines here. So now we've got black lines shooting out from the middle. Now, if we turn back on our effects layer, we've got these black lines added to our image. And to me, this sort of adds like a sort of black magic feel and it is a little bit muddy in a few of these areas, but you know, I can forgive that this time, but just this time. And now for the very last secret here, let's just create a new circle by grabbing our ellipse tool, dragging it over our comp. Let's align that to the very center, select its blending mode and set that to stencil alpha. Then let's duplicate it, set it to normal, scale it down even further, set its color to black. And now you put the best damn iris animation this side of Birmingham. Or, you know, something that looks like maybe a CD. Either way, it looks pretty cool. And don't forget that this project file is available to download for free down in the description. So have a tinker with it, play around, and I'd love to see how you apply these effects and use these techniques in your own work. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.